Hello and welcome to the Tutorial Toolbox. My name is Tobias and this is Unity 101. This is the second episode in our Unity 101 series and as I told you guys last time, today we are going to talk about game objects. So, game objects is Unity's way of thinking of everything that is inside of our world or scene or whatever you want to call it, basically our game. In the hierarchy, we can see the game objects that is currently in our game. And currently, we have the main camera, which is a camera game object. But most of, most importantly, it's just a game object. And there are two ways to create game objects. We can either use this drop-down menu and select from all the game objects that Unity has per default. Actually, there are three ways, my bad, but yeah. Uh, we can also use the game object menu inside the header bar, which has some other options. It's not only creating. We can create an empty child, uh, an empty or an empty child, which are basically game objects that are only transforms so you can have we'll get into that later but right now let's only worry about the game objects inside create other or this create there are a bunch of different game objects and we're not going to be touching about uh, upon all of them we are only going to be touching about these upon sorry upon these and some of these first of all let's take a cube once you click it it's automatically going to spawn inside the world at some semi random position so let's just edit its position back to the origin which is 0 0 0 if we highlight the camera now <clears throat> we can see the camera preview and we can somewhat see our box but it's all dark if you've ever worked with um, what's it called sorry if you've ever worked with 3d modeling or 3d tools before you're going to know that this is because there's no light sources so we're going to create a light source and we have three potentials directional light point light, spotlight, and area light. For the most part, you're only going to be want to using directional light and point light. And the most common, at least for, let's say, the sun, for example, the, the main light, you're usually going to be using directional light. You can also see in Unity that without the direction without the light our box is kind of dark in the scene view as well so when we add in our directional light you can say that it becomes lit it's now white as the material on it uh, per default is white and you can see that it has some kind of shadow on the side the one side is darker than the other sides and if we move behind it you can see that this side is even darker because it's not getting as much light as the others. The smart thing about the directional light is that the position of the light does not matter at all. So we can move it out of the way. What matters with direct the directional light is the rotation. So you can see if I change the X rotation, the cube gets either darker or lighter depending on how the directional light is facing now you can see right now it's shining um, downwards in this direction hitting the cube on top and a little bit on the sides and primarily the default is what you want but of course you can set it up so it'll work in any kind of way you want you can also have color lights, but as a primary light, you're gonna want probably gonna want to uh, set it to white, so that when it's white, it's going to 
illuminate the textures and the materials of the objects so that they do look like you have planned them to look. You could use a color light, for example, as a lamp. You could set the color to some kind of uh, yellowish, dim yellowish, orange color as to representing a, a lamp that is kind of dimmed. But enough of that. So we have our dire directional light. I'm just going to move it up here underneath our camera. The hierarchy also decides what gets put in the game first. So we want our essential things to be up top and our less essential things to be in the bottom. In the camera preview, you might also notice, also in the game view, that the color, the box, sorry, the cube, now has light and we can see it it's white just as intended so let's go into a little bit more about this cube the cube is a three-dimensional object which has six phases a phase is the well yeah the like if you have a face of a, a die the face is basically one of the areas on the side of the it's kind of confusing let's just um, look at it like this and you can see this here is the face this here is an edge and these corners we can call them corners but really in reality they're called vertices um, but that doesn't really mean that much unless you're gonna wanna uh, dip into 3D modeling. Let's just keep it to the fact that we have a cube which has six sides or six faces and it is three-dimensional and we can move it around in our space. All right. So you saw there, I can just grab one of these, if I have this tool here, I can grab one of these arrows and whichever arrow I grab, it lets me pull in that direction. You can see here which color arrow represents which direction and you can also see by pulling in them what kind of position it transforms. This tool here is the rotating tool that use, we use to rotate around the different axes. Again, the same colors correspond to the same axes. Y is green, C or Z is blue, and X is red. And the last tool to transform is the scaling tool, which kind of looks like the That's weird. <laughs> okay. So I somehow messed up the cube. At least the origin axis. Of the Let's just delete it <laughs> and create a new one. Alright. Um, let's move it back here. So the last tool, the scaling tool, kind of looks like the movement tool. But instead of arrows, it's boxes, and it lets us scale our object, making it bigger or smaller. It's pretty... These are one by default. It's pretty handy. And then, of course, this is the panning tool, which lets us grab uh, a point in the world and move around in the world. All right. So, per default, our cube or the other basic, um, what should we call it? The other basic game objects. Sorry about that. Uh, or models, or what you want to call them. The other basic um, things here have something attached to them called a mesh filter, a box collider, well, a collider. 
in this case it's a box collider because the cube is a box and a mesh renderer as well that as a default diffuse material which gives it the white color the cube mesh filter or mesh filter is basically um, what tells the game how this cube looks like that it has six faces and how ma ever many axes and vertices that it has if you had another object a sphere you can see it has a sphere mesh filter which tells again how the cube all these you can see when we look at it close up there's all these blue lines this is the mesh this is what tells the computer or unity how to render the uh, different components or game objects the box collider or the sphere collider basically just the collider is the green outlining if we turn it off you can see the green outlining disappears and basically what it does is that it allows us to use physics so we could have an object or a player stand on top of this box because it has a collider so we know where this box is in 3d space and then the mesh render is the well yeah the render what renders the mesh we can disable shadow casting and shadow receiving as well as manipulating how many materials and what materials are on our object let's just take a look at the different ones um, and let's talk a little bit about them basically these are just primitive objects that unity has uh, made so you don't have to go and make these primitive ones if you want more advanced objects uh, you're gonna have to make a 3d model yourself the primitive ones are the cube oh I forgot the sphere the sphere the cylinder the capsule sorry the cylinder the plane and the quad the quad is the most basic one the uh, both the cube and the uh, plane as well as the capsule cylinder actually has elements of this quad um, it's basically a one face that is two triangles um, but yeah it's, it's it's a basic form it's just a face that you can use if you need it it's not that commonly used but it has its uses um, you can see here that the capsule has its own capsule collider which is the, the size of a capsule the cylinder also uses a capsule collider the plane uses a mesh collider which is basically a collider that is the same size and position as the entire mesh and the quad also uses a mesh collider and the sphere has a sphere collider so we have these different types of colliders that correspond to different um, to different sorry uh, objects the mesh collider being the most extensive one because it has to use the entire mesh all the faces all the edges all the vertices all the triangles and it's the most uh, the one that takes the most power but it's also the most accurate one um, so yeah that's a little bit about game objects if there's something you feel I have missed feel free to ask a question in the comments or if you have any suggestions um, next time we are going to talk about materials 
as well as maybe some no let's just stick to materials next time and then we'll move forward from there um, I know that in the beginning this is probably not the most interesting thing to be watching and therefore if you already know all these um, Unity basics or 3D modeling basics that you might want to skip these uh, tutorials and move um, and join us again when we start making the game which is going to be soon because they're actually uh, Unity is really easy to get started with as you have seen we have only had two tutorials and we already know almost everything we need to know in order to make a game uh, a simple game nonetheless but a game so check back in a couple tutorials and we'll be starting the game part of the series very soon again thanks for watching it's been a pleasure and i'll see you guys next time where we'll talk about materials